How are we doing? Just fine. This ship's a real beauty. She basically flies herself. She just needs a tiny nudge now and again, but other than that... So, Mr. West's house... Call me Brian, please. Brian, when did you come to Arcadia? Oh, that was a long, long time ago. Too long. I traveled across the Divide in 33. 1933, that is. What? And you're how old exactly? Oh, I may be getting on, but I'm not that old. No, I got unstuck from time, and I was caught between worlds for a while. Not a pleasant experience by any measure of things, but I got out, and I made a life for myself in Mercuria. I'm never going back to Stark. And I'm fine with that. I've made peace with my past. Arcadia is my home now. Where in Stark did you come from? Boston, USA. Back when there was a USA. Hell, <laughs> back when there was a Boston. They're still there, both of them. How did you end up here? Are you a shifter? Most certainly not. I mean, if I was, I would probably have gone back at some point. No, I made my way through the Divide by more unconventional means. I'm not that old, mind you. Something happened that got me unstuck from time. It wasn't the best idea I ever had, but still, here I am in good health, and with all my limbs intact, I, I shouldn't complain. Have you seen a lot of this world? I'd say so. When Mercuria was invaded by the Tyran Hordes ten years ago, I was forced to leave the city. I first traveled east across the Northlands to a place called Irhad, the Sun Empire, and then south across the Great Ocean to the continent called the Southlands. After that, well, there's not much left in this world that I haven't seen. I've even been to the Azadi Empire. But I have to say that I like the Northlands and Mercuria best of all. I, it feels like home. What are the Tyran? They were a barbaric people who lived on the Western Plains. Ten years ago, they invaded Mercuria. Were? The Azadi killed them all when they liberated the city. If there are any left, they're few and scattered. The Tyran took the city during a time of great upheaval, but they didn't hold it long. The Azadi arrived in their ships soon after and drove them out. It's almost frightening how quickly the Tyran were wiped out. The Azadi showed no mercy. Where did the Azadi come from? Far west. Almost ten days journey by boat. In their airships, however, or cloud ships, it doesn't take many days to cross the ocean. You've visited their continent. I've passed through it, so to speak. Their capital, Sadir, is just amazing. It's built across a huge river delta where six rivers meet. It's a holy place. They let you just wander freely through their city? I passed as a traveler in their lands. It's not closed to outsiders, and as long as you respect the Azadi and their customs, they give you passage. It's such a different culture from what we're used to, but they're an interesting people, and I found my visit to be highly educational. What they're doing in Mercuria, though, it's certainly controversial. On one hand, they brought freedom and peace. On the other hand... They've rounded up the Magicals, stuck them in a ghetto, and God knows what they intend to do with them next. When do we get to the Dark People City? From what our feathered friend said, it'll be another day or so. Are you okay? Yeah. I'm just feeling a bit restless. Well, there's not much to do here. You can look around the cabin for a bit, talk to Crow, or take a nap back in the hold. There's a bed there. Thanks. Maybe I will. Looks very complicated. Sky and ocean as far as the eye can see. It's really beautiful. Crow looks a bit worse for wear. Crow's airsick. Go figure. Ah, uh, 
I'm feeling seasick. Seasick? Aren't you used to flying? Flying? Yes. Flying is no problem. Flying is flapping your wings and praying for a good tailwind. This isn't flying. This is torture. So why don't you jump out there and fly instead? What? And catch a cold? Are you kidding me? You do know that it's freezing out there, don't you? And it's not like I can keep up with this infernal machine. My wings are made for comfort flying, not marathons. No, I'll stay here. I'll just find a corner to go throw up in instead. Nice. What's it like being a talking bird? My beak is a finely tuned instrument of love. When I speak, girls tremble. And also guys. Guys tremble too, but not in the same way. Right. How long have you known April? That depends on how you look at it. We go way back. But I haven't really seen her since way back. What happened? She sent me on my merry way. She wanted to go find herself, which actually means go lose everyone else. I can recommend it, though. It's very liberating. I went off to find myself recently, and I have nothing but good things to say about it. You see, I was about to get married and... To a bird? I mean, not a woman. Well, yes, a woman, a female bird, someone with wings, like you. Yes, that's right. A bird. Anyway, so the idea of settling down, building a nest, starting a family... I don't know, I started freaking out. So I went on a journey of inner discovery. You went on a journey of discovery? Inner discovery. A quest for personal understanding. A mission of self-realization. A voyage of inward fulfillment. A trek to the... Okay, yes, I get it. You wanted to find yourself. It's brilliant. You desert everyone, abandon your responsibilities and relationships, and focus completely on your own personal misery. It's a douche for the soul. You know, Crow, I think you may have misunderstood what finding yourself is all about. What? No, April showed me how it's done. I can't believe I didn't do it sooner. I feel so much... lighter. Not a care in the world. Except for, you know, the total and abject misery in my heart and soul. So you abandoned your fiancé to go on a selfish journey of inner discovery? Abandoned is a strong word. Left? Deserted? Forsook? Yes, yes, and yes. Slipped away in the dead of night? Sure. But it was all for the best. I obviously wasn't ready to, you know, become a responsible, grown-up, magical bird. Where does one go to find oneself, I asked. Granted, I only asked myself, and I probably should have gotten a second opinion, but there you go. So I decided to seek the center of all wisdom and knowledge in Arcadia. This dark people's city? No, no, no. Some fortune teller in Zahn. She stiffed me. It was actually blind luck that I ended up in the dark people's city. I never intended to go there, but it was a real blessing, I tell you. These guys, they let me read anything I wanted. And I've learned a lot. Like, for example... Did you know that a Diavon water snake can grow to be almost 200 meters long? I didn't. I didn't really want to find out either, because now I'm really freaked out by water, but there's not much else to do in the place except read. Read, eat, read, sleep, read, go to the bathroom, and read at the same time. It's really very, very dull. But all that introspection gave me perspective. I wisened up, and now I'm ready. Ready to get married? Ready to admit that I'm scared out of my feathers about getting married. So no, still on that journey. About April. I don't understand what happened to her. Oh, she was the sweetest, prettiest, nicest girl you could have ever imagined. And she was a real trooper. Save the world and all. You don't see a lot of people doing that these days. But things didn't turn out the way she thought they would. She couldn't go back to her world. First because she was afraid, and then later because she lost her powers. On top of that, the Azadi were after everyone from Stark. Everyone with special powers, everyone who was allied with the Magicals. In the end, I think April just snapped. 
She was so angry, she felt so betrayed. She had to take it out on someone. Fortunately, she decided to take it out on the Azadi. I wanted to stick with her, I really did, despite the yelling and the bitterness. But in the end, she just up and left me. Right in the middle of nowhere, too. I tried looking for her, but after a while, I gave up. I got the distinct feeling she didn't want me around anyway. So, I left to begin a new life. I don't think there's anything you could have done, Crow. Sometimes the people we know and love change, and sometimes that means we have to move on. What powers did April lose? Her special thingy, being a shifter. First, she didn't want to go back to Stark, and then, one day, she couldn't. Her powers went poof, and no one knows why. Ooh. What? What? Why did you go, ooh? Because it's spooky. Also, I like saying it. It makes my beak vibrate. You don't think she lost her powers because she felt her powers were the cause of her misery? It's, of course, I, I wouldn't know what, huh? Seems to me that she was scared about facing reality again. And she decided that her powers would only bring more pain. So she lost them. Oh, oh, that's, uh, uh, psychology, isn't it? Oh, brilliant. You human females from Stark are really clever. So, hey, if we hit April with a really big frying pan, she'll come to her senses, right? What? No. Yes, yes, it's called therapy. I read about it somewhere. Well, not read, more like heard. In a seedy tavern near the docks? After eleven thimbles of Mary Minstrom's yellow fire? Just before dawn. On a Monday. But I remember the fella who told me. Big lad. Arms as thick as oak trees. A stunning collection of scars. Nice eye patch. A real therapist he was. Er, wait, maybe it was rapist. It was nice chatting with you, Crow. It's been very informative. Glad to help, doll. Doll? Um, I mean, independent and self-reliant female person who's not an object to be ogled at or used solely for my own personal amusement and pleasure. Mr. Westhouse seems to be a good pilot. Not that I would know. Maybe we're way off course. Mr. Westhouse. Brian. Still feeling restless, Miss Castillo? Sort of. I guess that's understandable, being cooped up like this. Maybe I'll go and take that nap now. Good idea. Still feeling sick? Ugh. Talk to you later, Crow. If I'm not right here, I'm over in that corner, throwing up. The hold is back there, and the bed. city. The White of the Kin is expecting you. Who? That's the White Dragon, Zoe. How did she know I was coming? I stopped asking those kinds of questions a long, long time ago. You just have to start buying into stuff like destiny and precognition, or you'll go nuts. She waits in the library. Follow me. Right. Okay, no point in asking any questions, is there? Absolutely not. It'll only make your head hurt. Part of me just wants to go back inside and close the door. I hope Brian and, okay, Crow, knows how to get back to the mainland. I'm definitely glad he came along. I would be so freaked out if I was alone right now. 
Brian is the one normal thing in this whole place. Even Crow is a talking bird. Have you seen anything like it? Never. I thought I'd seen everything, but this... This is truly amazing. We should follow the emissary to the library. I'm eager to see it myself. Okay, no legs. Hovering. But yeah, I've seen weirder things. Not a lot, but a few. This is good. I can deal. He wants us to follow. Let's just hope there's ground to walk on where he's taking us. Crow probably knows this place inside out. This is a really strange place. Tell me about it. I couldn't sleep for the first couple of weeks. All those fancy lights and the spiders freak me out. Spiders? Exactly. Even Crow looks a bit overwhelmed by this place. And he's lived here. The White Dragon will be in the library. some huge things out there. I hope those um windows are thick. Tons and tons of books. I don't envy those dark people who have to keep this place organised. I don't think they have Shakespeare or Dickens here, but I bet there are some fantastic works of art. Hi, I'm Zoe. How fascinating. You're here, and yet you're not. Can I touch you? Can you... What do you mean by... Who's that? Oh, I forgot. This is my friend Brian Westhouse. He's a... um... a traveller, I guess. You sound... so familiar. You've heard my name before? Your presence, your being, sounds familiar. And also... also disconcerting. I feel a prickling on my skin. What do you call it? Goosebumps? My apologies, ma'am. I don't wish to perturb you. Maybe I should just leave you... No, please. Stay. Perhaps it's... I'm sure it's just me. You see, I don't understand this body yet. I don't know what any of these feelings mean. I apologize. You're most welcome here, Traveller. Thank you, ma'am. I'll leave the two of you alone while I peruse this magnificent library. You've come to me for the same reason April came to me not long ago. You're stuck. I'm stuck here in Arcadia, yes. I need to go back to Stark. But this isn't the only place you're stuck. You're stuck in life like driftwood to a river. You lack direction. You lack faith. 
Maybe so, but that's why it's important that I go back home. People there need me, and I want to be there for them. I don't want to be adrift anymore. I want to be where I'm needed the most. And that will bring you home, Zoe. Your commitment to your friends, your belief in yourself, and your abilities. Faith will bring you where you're needed the most. How? It's easy. You're not really here. That's what you said earlier. But it doesn't make sense. I'm right here. Yes and no. You're unlike anyone I've ever met. You belong to the story time. Okay, now you're being cryptic. I've had enough of that. I can't take any more riddles. Just tell me what it means. I'm sorry. It's not cryptic to me. It just is. With all due respect, I just want to get home. I want to help my friends. I want to stop the bad guys from winning. I want to... I want to be myself again. The last time I was here in Arcadia, I fell asleep. And when I woke up, I was back home in Stark. How did I do that? When I fell asleep on the airship on my way here, I didn't disappear. That's because you didn't dream. If you dream the right dream, it becomes reality. You can go anywhere you wish. To go back to your own world, you just have to wake up. You mean this is all a dream? This isn't a dream, but you're dreaming. I'm confused again. All I need to do is go to sleep and dream about home, and then I'll wake up and be home. Maybe. I've never met anyone like you. I only know that there are some who have a strong connection with the world of dreams. And you are one of them. I'll just have to take your word for it. Help me fall asleep. Help me dream or wake up or whatever it is you said I need to do to get home. Time's running out. I have to be where I'm needed the most. Come here. You must find her, Zoe. You must help her. Wherever she is, that's where you're needed the most. What? Where did she go? What did you do to her? Did you use magic on her? I didn't do anything to her, funny bird. She left this place on her own. But, but she just vanished. I know. Isn't it fascinating? There's no one else like her. She's special. I've never met a human girl who hasn't been special. For all I know, they've all got strange powers and important destinies. I just hope she's okay. Most interesting. Celebrating something. It looks like they've built this town from bits and pieces of everything, even boats.
all the doors are closed. Closed and locked. I don't think there's anyone in there. What the hell was that thing? I'm staying far, far away from the water. What is that? Whoever lives here, they must be using boats to ferry between the different parts of the city. Even if I knew how to, you know, drive a boat, I still don't think I'd brave those murky waters. It's a sizeable town, spread all over the swamp, but the walkways don't cover all of it. I would probably need a boat to get across there. It's a large town, and there are lights everywhere. A lot of people must live here. But who are they? And why was I sent here? It's a large town built right on the swamp. to make another run south before the ice breaks, though I'm guessing Mercuria is out of the question. We lost some good people. We got careless. Bah! We were as careful as we could be. We just got unlucky. It was bound to happen sooner or later. Let's just hope we got enough intelligence out of it to justify the losses. I wish I could say that's the case. The fact is... They're getting too strong for us. They tore us apart down there. Easy as... Ah, quit your whining, woman. The raven I know is tougher than that. There's enough doom and gloom in this place already. Which is why I'm going back. To Mercuria? Are you sure that's wise? We stay here, we go there. It's all the same. They're coming and they won't stop. Not until we strike at their heart. Mercuria, the tower. Ha! The tower! It'll take more than you and your band of merry rebels to topple that one, Raven. And even if you do, you think that'll stop them? No. We need to stay strong, build our allegiances, recruit more people, and keep the enemy from our doorstep. Time and patience will decide the victor. We don't have time. Look at what happened in Mercuria. We have to act now. We have to take the war to them. I'm inclined to agree, Raven, but we're not strong enough. Not yet. If you stay here, we can train more people, build our strength, and... And talk about how someday we'll crush the enemy and take back our lands and our cities. That's what we do best. Talk. They murdered my friends. They arrested our most trusted ally in Mercuria, and they're probably moving north even now. And you say we should wait? I'm done waiting. Ah, the Azadi don't have a clue where we are. Trust me, Raven, we're safe here. Besides, no one but me and my boys can navigate the rivers and swamps between us and the Bay of Fire. Even if the Azadi should learn of our whereabouts, the scouts will give us two days' warning. We'll sink their boats before they even know what hit them. Even so, I can't just sit here and wait. I have to do something. I swear, Raven, you'll get yourself killed one of these days. (laughs) Sometimes I wonder if that's not what you want. But if it's south you want to go, if you want to take your war to the Azadi, then fine. You'll have my boat. I'll take you where you want to go. Now, you'll have to excuse me. We still have to unload the grain and move all the supplies into storage. I'll come by later and give you a hand. I just have a few people I need to speak with first.
The captain got the ship out of Mercuria just in time. Another few hours and they would have arrested everyone, I'm sure of it. He's a trusted ally. Boats are very important here. You cannot reach another section of the city without one. Even here, people keep their doors closed and bolted. The Azadi have taught us to fear and distrust each other. Everyone locks their doors. There are five separate sections of the city, and you can only get from one to the other via boat. That makes it hard for an enemy to mount a coordinated attack. The city's been added to many times over the years. Every time I return, there's another new addition. We've all lost our homes and our lands, but thanks to you, Raven, there's still hope that we will see them again someday. There are lots of new faces since I was last here. It would be easy for the Azadi to infiltrate the city, but that's a risk we have to take, I guess. I never wanted this, but the enemy left us with no choice but to take up arms against them. We spend most of our time in the field. I hardly recognize anyone around here. New people are arriving every day. Kara is the closest thing this town has to a mayor. She was elected to head the council last spring. I know they're running short of warm clothes in Snapjaw's Cove, Duran. We need to send a boat over with coats, shoes and blankets. And in Bunvik, they are fighting a fierce fever. We need to get them some medicines, and soon. It's not safe for them to travel to Khorasan any longer. There are more and more Azadi in that city. It's only a question of time before the Council announces their allegiance to the Empire. Kara! A moment, April. Please make sure the herbs are distributed to the lieutenants. They are each responsible for their group getting the medicine they need. April. Thank the balance you escaped, Mercuria, and that Bryn and Chowan made it here with the supplies. Your efforts are much appreciated. Kara, about Benrime, we need to do... She put her life on the line for us. We won't forget that any time soon. We'll sing her song at the tables tonight. The Azadi will be keeping her alive until they can ship her west. They like to have a show trial before executing their prisoners. If I can take a dozen people with me south, I can... You intend to take on the entire Azadi army by yourself? No, April. This war will have its victims, and you'll have to learn to live with that. You may have a death wish, but not everyone shares your lack of faith in the future. In time, we shall prevail. I've dedicated my life to fighting the Azadi, Kara. What makes you say that I have no faith? You've already given up your life. You don't fight because you want to destroy them. You fight to destroy yourself and your demons. Granted, your ferocity and guidance have strengthened us. The enemy fear and curse your name, and you've made them tread more cautiously in the north. But both you and I know you're not doing this for any greater cause. 
You're doing this because it's the only thing you have left. And I can't have you taking our people with you on a suicide mission. So we let Benrime rot in prison, is that it? We let them take her to their country where she'll die because she helped us? Yes, we do. Benrime wasn't, isn't stupid. She knew the risks. She knew it was a dangerous game to play and she played it as safe as she could. Unlike you. I don't accept that. I can't leave her to die. Accept it or not, you're not taking anyone south. We have enough trouble protecting our homes and our supplies. We can't afford another setback. They're not your people. They make their own decisions. That they do. And you may find that for once, you're on your own. Now, if you'll excuse me, I have other matters to attend to. I'll see you at dinner tonight, April. And thank you again for bringing us the supplies. Without them, we wouldn't have lasted through the winter. Care is not our leader, but she does head the council, and that gives her a lot of say in how we use our people and resources. There's no point. She won't understand. I would just be wasting my time. The supplies are being distributed around town. We don't want to keep it all in one place, in case of trouble. My entire family was taken from me by the Azadi. For every loved one, I will slay a hundred of them. A thousand! Thank the balance you all made at home, Raven. We've seen this war claim too many lives already. This winter has been tough on everyone. I can't wait until spring is here. Although we should have hit the Azadi while there's still snow and ice in the forests. The Azadi will never find us here, will they? I don't want to run again. I'm tired of running. People are looking tired but hopeful. Everyone's just tired of waiting for the war to come to us. We should take the war to the Azadi. How's Mercuria doing? I wonder if I'll ever be able to freely walk our streets again. They're beautiful. I like watching starflies. They calm me down. I'm so glad to see that Na'ane is safe, though I wonder how she managed to escape the Azari. Na'ane? April on. It brightens my heart and spirit to see you here, safe and in good health. We heard that you had escaped Mercuria, but I was worried nonetheless, and now the stars have brought you back to us. How did you get out of Markyria? I heard they shut all the gates and posted guards at all exits. As a stowaway on trade ship bound for Khorasan, and on a leap first back north along the old paths, Azid was generous enough to share her mount with me. I'm glad you're safe. Good thing Bryn and Chuan had just left with the supplies. They were the lucky ones. The stars shine on all of us, April On. What about our friends at the Journeyman? What about Benrime? I'm sure they don't feel so lucky right now. Fortune often has a dark side, but there may still be a chance to aid the innkeeper. What? How? I have just been told that someone arrives from Mercuria with word of Benrime. He wishes to speak with you. Who? A stranger. A friend. A messenger. He wishes to meet with you on the West Pier. He will speak with you and no one else. Are you sure this man is a friend? How did he find us? Would I lie to you, Aprilon? I'm sorry, Naane, of course not. I trust you. I'll go right away. Listen, if it turns out this man has important information and I have to go back to rescue... I would not let you walk alone, Aprilon. Go now. He arrives soon. 
Na'ane told me to meet the messenger on the pier. You must go to the west pier. The messenger will meet you there shortly. What's that? I think the celebrations might be getting out of hand. I need to speak with Kara about that. This is it. But where's the messenger? Who are... These doors do not look very secure, but in a remote place like this, they don't have to be. Who are you? I haven't seen you before. So many newcomers. Will the Azadi ever stop moving eastward? Say whatever you will about these terror... about the rebels, but they care about their own. But I'm not here for them. I'm here for the Scorpion. Did you hear about Raven and her team? They brought the supplies with them from Mercuria. There's gonna be a feast tonight. I do not agree with their tactics, but I do believe that these rebels act in honor and in faith. Supplies made it here. Good. I had no wish for their women and children to starve or to fall ill. Faith or no faith, innocent lives are precious. That's a great outfit. Where did you get it? I haven't seen you around the campfire, handsome. <laughs> Are you from the eastern fringes of the swamp? I think I would have noticed you. You must be one of the Southlanders from Guyen. Have the enemy taken over your lands as well? We need more of you to come here. I don't talk to strangers. You never know who to trust. Strange. Perhaps it was a message to... someone. It's hard to believe that anyone would build a city like this. It's a long way from the white walls and gleaming towers of Sidir. Boats must be important to get around this city. Only parts of it are covered by the bridges and walkways. Glowing insects. What a strange place this is. The witch is here, as promised. She will bring me the scorpion, and then my mission will be completed. I'm here. I have kept my part of the bargain. Now it's your turn. 
I have done what you asked of me, Azadi. Your scorpion waits on that pier, alone. Leave. If I ever see you again, my sword will kiss your throat. For what I have done, I am already dead. This is it. But where's the messenger? Who are... You. I remember you. From Arcuria, but you're... You're the Azadi. What are you doing here? Have you been... Shit! You followed me here! I swear by my sword I did not follow you. I came here by other means. I wish you no harm, mistress. You spoke to me with honesty back in the city, and I respect that. So what the hell are you doing here? If you brought soldiers with you... There's civilians here. Women. Children. I did not bring any soldiers. I am alone. Then why... Please, let me explain. I'm an apostle. We are missionaries. We bring the word of the goddess to unbelievers. But we do so with cold steel and swift death, instead of sermons and prayers. We are the last resort, and we are feared. I have never before doubted the righteousness of my mission. The goddess is the one true deity, and we must bring her light to the darkest places. And yet, I have seen and heard many things in my brief time here in the Northlands. I have seen with my own eyes how ignorance and fear are leading some of my people astray, how arrogance and distrust threaten to corrupt our mission. I have witnessed deeds, deeds of which you spoke so passionately when we first met, that have lifted a veil from my eyes. Does the goddess, in her infinite and unquestionable wisdom, truly want us to commit these deeds on sovereign peoples in these sovereign lands? When we last met, mistress, your words awoke something inside of me. I have never questioned my mission or my faith. To do so would be to question my entire existence. And still, now that we meet again, I'm reminded of the parting words of an old friend. Words dismissed too quickly. And I find myself... torn. Bravo. That's a very convincing speech, Apostle. You almost had me going there for a moment. But the fact is, you're an enemy assassin. You're in our city, and you didn't come here to talk to me. I am an assassin. And my mission is plain and undisputable. Only, I believe now that the goddess has led me here for another reason. Led me to you. Why else would she have brought us together? First in Marcuria and now here. If it wasn't to show me, show us a different path. Sorry, I don't believe in destiny or divine intervention. Not anymore. I believe that some things are meant to happen. Call it destiny. Call it the will of the goddess. Call it chance. But do not call it coincidence. So what now? You expect me to just let you walk out of here? To accept that you've seen the light? No. Yes. I, I don't know what to think anymore. I only wish to speak with you for a little while longer. To understand. To open my heart to a different truth. I believe the goddess wishes to speak to me. To me. And not to those who would interpret her word to suit their needs. And what's your goddess telling you? That my path, a path I have never even considered questioning until this moment, may be one that leads into shadows, and not into light. Look, if you came here to find enlightenment, Azadi, you've come to the wrong person. The name is Kian, mistress. I cannot claim that I came here to find enlightenment, quite the opposite. Yet now I'm starting to see that a great injustice may have been done to the peoples of the Northlands. If that is so, it's my duty to help undo the damage. You're planning on turning against your own? I will never take up arms against those I have sworn to protect. But I intend to return to Sadir and inform the Six 
our empresses about what goes on in the provinces. Why? Because it is not right. It is certainly not the will of the goddess. And it is a betrayal of everything I have been taught to believe in. I still don't understand, Kian. Faith, mistress. I feared I was losing it, but I was wrong. My faith is as strong as ever. It may quite simply have been misplaced. I... I guess I owe you a name. I'm April. April. I am pleased to make your acquaintance. You shouldn't stay. If anyone sees you... You will not tell them. I don't have an easy time trusting anyone as a... Kian. But I'm beginning to believe that you are the real thing. An honorable man. I try to be. But I still don't understand why you're here. And I don't understand why Na'ane told me that you're... so far as to betray your own people. Vamon, what in the name of the goddess are you doing? Your job, Alvane. Destroying the enemy. Or did you forget that was why you were sent here? There are women and children in this city, Vamon. Civilians. They're all equal in the eyes of the goddess, are they not? Terrorists, wives of terrorists, children of terrorists, sinners, every one of them. As for this one, is this who you were sent to kill? To... kill? No. I was about to tell you. I did not know who you were. I came to find the Scorpion and I found you in his place. Scorpion? That's... That's the name your people gave me after I put the fear of the balance into them. You're... him. Your mouth is filled with venom which, even to the last, you are truly beneath us. And you, Alvani. Arrest him. Lower your weapon, soldier. I'm an apostle. No more, Kian Alvani. You have betrayed the Six. You have strayed from the path. And you have forsaken the mission. You have become soft, like a spoiled fruit. You actually empathize with these heathens and murderers. You, apostle, have committed a mortal sin. You have lost your faith. No, Vamon. It is not I who have strayed from the path. It is not I who have lost my faith. What are we doing to these people? Why are we trespassing on their land? This is not the will of the goddess. So now you question your empresses too. Your hole grows deeper by the second apostle. Alvane. Still, the goddess is merciful, and so am I. I'll give you one more chance to prove your loyalty and save yourself from eternal damnation. Do what you came here to do. Kill this murderous witch. Kill the scorpion. How do you know that this woman is the scorpion? Are you feeble or just deaf? She confessed to us. I am the Scorpion. Do you honestly think I fear death? I've faced it countless times and I've never blinked. You should fear death, witch. The goddess does not smile on murderers and heretics. What stays your blade, Alvane? Whomever she is, whatever she's done, she does not deserve death. I cannot kill her. Spare her life, Vamon, please. She has only killed to protect her land and her people. She has murdered Trueborn, Alvani. Her hands reek of their blood. How can you proclaim her innocence when she admits her own guilt so readily? At least let her stand trial. Let her speak. Let her explain her actions to the Council. Maybe then we can get... I'm not going to stand in front of your judges and plead for my life. I'd rather die here. 
Very well. You've made your choice. Kill her. Please don't tell me you felt for that godlessless butcher. What you're doing here is wrong. What? Protecting our people from terrorists? Destroying the enemy's stronghold? Tell me, Kian, what exactly am I doing wrong? These people are only defending their homes and lands from invaders. We're in the wrong here, not them. You've fallen far deeper than I thought possible, Elvani. It will be entertaining to see you stand trial. It will not happen. When the emissary... The emissary was the one who ordered you arrested, Alvani, after you let the innkeeper and that smuggler vessel go. It was clear to the mistress that your loyalties were no longer with the Empire. Although, ironically enough, you were the one who led us here. I'm sure that will count in your favor at the trial. Maybe they'll even let your body lie in a marked grave. Take him away. I'll make you pay for this, Vamon. I swear by the goddess, I will not rest until your beating heart is in my hand. Such unpleasantness. Kill them all. Burn the city down. Leave no prisoners. She's dead, Chuan. Dead. She is dead, and there is nothing we can do now. If you do not quiet down, we will soon be dead ourselves. We might as well be. Listen, they're killing them. Every one of them. What's the point of surviving if we're alone? That's it. I'm going out there. Bryn. No. There are too many. We will make our way to safety and regroup, but first we have to help her escape. You cannot leave with us. It is too dangerous. You will not survive. You need to fall asleep again. But they're already searching the houses. If we stay, won't they kill us? When you fall asleep, you disappear, like dew to the sun. You travel. I have seen it with my eyes. I know, but how can I fall asleep here, now? Chawan! Bryn, hand me that pouch over there. They're coming closer. Do as I say. Quickly now. What's that stuff? Cover your face, Bryn. You, breathe deeply. <coughs> what is it? It is a powerful magic. It will make you sleep. Breathe it. Shit. They're coming. Chuan, we need to get out of here now. It's not working. I'm not falling asleep. Breathe. Slowly. Deeply. I'm... trying to, but it's not... helping any. I'm only feeling woozed. They are all evils in the eyes of the gun. Break down this door, soldier. We're here. Joanne? We must leave. Go. Go. Who's there? Hello? Funny bird, is that you? Oh, I didn't see you. Are you looking for something? Wait, no! What are you- Damien? Are you here? He promised me he'd stay. I 
I've spent most of my time here sleeping. I must have been completely exhausted. Hey, there's a, a message for me. It must be from Damien. Zoe, I hope you get this message. I had to leave quickly. The worm was... They found it, and they will track it back to me. I didn't want to leave you, but I had no choice. I tried to wake you up, but you, you weren't responding. The good news is, before they caught it, the worm did collect enough data for me to get the coordinates we spoke about. The intrusion into Dreamcore originated in Russia, just outside St. Petersburg. I've sent you the exact coordinates, along with a map. If I manage to get out of here, that's where I'll be heading. If you decide to go there, and I expect you will, be very careful. I'll try and contact you, but I can't promise anything. Zoe, you must leave, right now. When they discover who planted the worm, they'll send someone to the apartment. You need to be gone. The quickest way to St. Petersburg is by scramjet. Oh, and um, there's some warm clothes in the bathroom closet. Good luck. I'll, I'll see you soon, I hope. Take care of yourself. You have one new message from Dad. It's me. I've been calling you for a couple of days now, but you're not picking up. And you haven't replied to any of my messages. What's going on? Where are you? Please, call me as soon as you get this. I'm getting worried. Okay, bye. Hello, Zoe. Uh, I'm sorry, but I'm currently away from my phone. Leave me a message and I'll call you back as soon as I can. Hey, Dad. Look, um, I'm sorry for not calling you back sooner. I'm... I've been so lazy. All I do is sleep and hang around the house. Big surprise, right? I hope things are going well for you in Bombay. You don't have to call me back, not unless it's important. I'm perfectly fine. Very bored, but fine. Oh, and don't worry, I haven't spoken to Reza. I'm staying out of trouble. Promise. Love you. Bye. Damien's console. I'm not going to rummage through his private files. It's grey out. Looks like it's cold still. That thing's been on most of the day while I've been staying here. Hey, it's therapy. That's the bathroom through there. Damien orders in. He claims he's a great cook, but I'm just not seeing it. I don't think this has been cleaned in a while. Damien definitely needs a housebot. <laughs> 